Okay, this is the video on reinforcement and punishment. This is a key idea you guys need to get. It's going to be worth lots of points. There is a handout that comes with it. It's this. It's called R&P. It's in the course material folder, and you'll see it in the handouts for exam two. Okay, so for operant conditioning, what we have is this is SRS. Okay, there's stimuli. Uh, that start a behavior. It's kind of maybe where you are, what the situation is, and then the response or the R is your behavior. So there's a behavior, there's an outcome. Now the outcome can either be an SR, which is a reinforcing stimulus, or an SP, which is a punishing stimulus. So this is basically you do a behavior and then you're either reinforced or punished for it. Okay, so we're talking about these this half of the three-term contingency. All right, so for example, if you put money in a vending machine, you get a soda. So the behavior is put the money in, and the outcome is get soda, okay? Or you wake up late, you miss the bus. So I've underlined the behavior, wake up late, I've circled the consequence or the outcome, miss the bus. Okay, so we're gonna have to learn how to label these outcomes, these consequences. Now the first part of the label we want is to label it either as a reinforcer or a punisher. So when you look at the outcome of any particular behavior, just ask yourself the question, is that outcome going to encourage me to do this again in the future? And if so, you slap on the label reinforcement. Or is this particular outcome going to make me less likely to do that behavior in the future? And if that's your answer, then you call it punishment. Now let's try some examples and we'll just try to recognize the reinforcement or punishment part. Every example is going to get two letters. It's going to get, um, we're going to call it either positive or negative, P or N, we'll do that later, and then the second letter is going to be R or P, reinforcement or punishment. So let's look at some examples and just decide are they being, is this reinforcement or punishment. So the behavior is on this side. Turn key, the outcome is car starts. Now I have this little arrow here because to decide whether or not this is reinforcement or punishment, what you need to do is ask yourself the question, does this outcome encourage or discourage the behavior of turning the key? Well, the car starts encourages you in the future to turn the key. So encourage means reinforcement. Okay. You say please, you get candy. Does get candy encourage or discourage you from saying please? Well, you got candy, so it's probably going to encourage you. So we're going to call this reinforcement. You cook dinner. And therefore, you do not have to do the dishes. Okay, so not having to do the dishes, will that encourage you to cook dinner in the future or discourage? Probably encourage, so we'll say reinforcement. You cook an icky dinner, and the outcome is your family complains about it. So having to hear the complaints, is that going to encourage you to cook icky dinners or discourage? Probably discourage. So this is an example of punishment. You put on your seatbelt, and that ding, ding, ding sound goes away. All right, so having the sound go away, again, does that encourage you to put on the seatbelt or discourage? Probably encourage. It's an annoying sound, so we call this reinforcement. Last one. You stay out late after curfew. Your parents take away the car keys. Okay, so having parents take the keys, does that encourage staying out late or discourage? Well, that particular outcome of losing your car, uh, car privileges, is discouraging to staying out late. So we're going to call this punishment. Now, more than likely, there's other consequences that reinforce this. So like, well, I stayed out late, but I had a really great time. Okay, well, that's a reinforcer for staying out late. Losing your car privileges is a punisher for staying out late. Okay, so that's half of it, figuring out what we call the consequence reinforcement and punishment. Now remember, don't get hung up on thinking about is something good or something bad, because that will lead you astray terribly, and so don't even go there. All right, so now once we've got the reinforcement punishment down, we need to figure out the letter that comes before that. Um, all right, so we've decided it's reinforcement, we've decided it's punishment. Now there's this other label where it can be considered positive or negative. Now again, this is not bad and good. This is Positive and negative refer to something completely different than whether something we like it or we don't like it. Um, if you really want to know, what it refers to is the contingency between the behavior and the outcome. 
So if a behavior causes an outcome to occur, we call it a positive contingency. If a behavior prevents something from happening, we call it a negative contingency. And there's some negative contingencies we would really like to do. I would like to do behaviors that avoids me getting fired from my job. You would like to do things that avoid getting an F in a class. So there are negative contingencies that we like very much, okay? So negative is not bad. It just describes something else. All right, so to decide this, we have to go back to our behavior examples and ask, now, when you're doing this part, forget about the behavior, only look at the outcome and ask yourself, is the outcome something that is added, something happens, I have a little plus sign for addition, add, and if it is, we call it positive. We just stick that label on it. We already decided if it's reinforcement and punishment. Now we want to say, is that outcome something that was added to the world? It's happening now and it wasn't before. Then we'll, we'll label it positive. Or is the outcome something that was taken away, subtracted? It didn't happen. It was prevented. Okay? We have a little minus sign for subtraction, subtracted. Little minus signs like negative. So it gets the negative label if the outcome is removing something. Okay, so let's look at our examples again. And we had already decided reinforcement and punishment, but now we want to decide is it positive or negative. All right, so you turn the key, car starts. We said that's reinforcement. Now, just look at car starts. Is that something happening, something added, something that wasn't there before? Yeah, the car is running now. It wasn't there before. So we'll call it, it's added. It's positive. So that was positive reinforcement. Get candy. We said it encouraged saying please, so it's reinforcement. Now just forget the please. Just look at candy. Get candy. Is something added or taken away? Added. It's positive. It's positive reinforcement. Cook dinner. Do not have to do the dishes. We said that was reinforcement. Now is something being added or taken away? I don't have to do the dishes. The job of doing dishes was removed from me. So this is negative, and it's a negative reinforcer because we already said that encourages the behavior. Negative reinforcement. Let's see. Family complains. We said that discouraged. It punished cooking something gross. Um, but family complains. Has something been added or subtracted, taken away? Well, they weren't complaining before dinner, and now they are. So we've added complaints that's positive. So this is going to be positive punishment. The noise goes away. Well, there you go. It went away. It subtracted. So this is negative. Now, this was one that encouraged seatbelt use, so it's negative reinforcement. Last one. Parents take the car keys. Okay, something was removed. Your car keys, your car privileges. So it's going to be negative. And of course, we had already said that discouraged staying out late. So this is an example of negative punishment. Okay, that's the key to these, but you have to practice. So let me grab my sheet. Uh, take your sheet, your handout. I emailed it to you and it's on Blackboard. Take a minute, pause the video, do a few of these, and we'll troubleshoot a couple. Um, but remember, just ask the questions it says. And when you get to the negative positive part, just cover up the behavior. Don't worry about the behavior, only look at the consequence. That label, positive and negative, only applies to the outcome. It has nothing to do with behavior. It's a place a lot of people get confused. Okay, so go ahead, take a break, and do a few of these and come back. Okay, I'll assume you did some. And let's just look at a couple. Uh, let's look at the first one. All right, so police officers are pulling people over and giving them a prize if their seatbelt's buckled. Now, what is the behavior here that has a particular outcome? It's having your seatbelt buckled, the behavior. The outcome is you get a prize. Now, it tells you seatbelt use increases. Well, that's the definition of reinforcement, that some, an outcome makes something more likely to happen. So this is reinforcement, and they're getting a prize, so it's positive reinforcement. Okay. Look at the basketball player. There's kind of two ways to look at this one. He commits a foul, that's a behavior. The outcome is he's suspended from playing. Now if we look at that as he loses playing time, they take away playing time, then it's negative, taken away. Punishment, it discourages the foul. 
okay? Now, if you had looked at this and said, well, he's getting a foul, like they keep track of how many personal fouls you have, um, and he has one more now, you could say it's positive punishment. I tried to write it as a negative thing, but I could have probably written it more clearly. That's one thing to remember. You can write any of these in probably four different ways. It just depends on kind of how you state it, what you focus on. In fact, I rewrite some of these so you can see that. Okay, once you finish this sheet, take a shot at it, do your best, bring it to class, the next class, which this semester would be Monday, and we're going to work on um, troubleshooting this. But hopefully you'll have the explanation, you'll know what you, how to do these, and I'll see you on Monday.